Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to take our weekly nursery tour. So remember, this is a snapshot of things that are growing, blooming, and thriving here at the nursery in North Carolina, Zone 7B. We are in Dallas, North Carolina, just west of Charlotte. And so if you are coming to the nursery this week or next week, these are some of the things that you can expect to find as long as supplies last. So this is a great overview of what is available here at the nursery. Before I get too far into the nursery tour, great news to you sweet folks who are coming this Saturday to come visit us because guess who else is gonna be here? Yes, Bolton's Food Truck. So Bolton's is, they have y'all, the best burgers and onion rings and french fries. They do the smash burgers, so they're really thin. And then they do all these fantastic toppings on them literally the best onion rings I have ever had in my mouth. Get here early because they sell out of the onion rings super fast. Um, I think they're going to bring more this week, but just know that Bolton's is coming. They will be set up right uh, behind the shrub lot. Bring a chair, bring a blanket. We have gorgeous areas back here where you can um, have a little picnic after you shop or while you're shopping and it's great. So they give you a little pager so you can go shop and then when your food's ready, the little beeper will go off and you can go pick it up. So Bolton's this Saturday at the nursery. We're going to focus on right now while we're down here at the shrub lot, hydrangeas. Things, shrubs that are going to be flowering or are flowering right now. Here we are at the very end of May and the heat is starting to hit us here in North Carolina and our panicle hydrangeas our oak leaf hydrangeas, our trailing hydrangeas, um, our arborescents, they are starting to bloom. So we're going to go through and give you kind of an update and give you some ideas because there basically is a hydrangea, I would say just about for every kind of garden you have out there. Typically we think of hydrangeas as shade. Well, the panicle hydrangeas are wonderful for the sun. I am standing right now in the midst of pufferfish. Pufferfish is new from Proven Winners this year and we have got multiples that have got buds on them. Now they're not clearly they're not blooming yet but you can see these buds are forming. Panicle hydrangeas must have sun in order to bloom. So you need a minimum of five to six hours of direct sunlight a day. That is the energy that they have to have to produce these flowers. Pufferfish is fun because they do massive creamy white panicles. And then at the end of kind of like once that bloom has already formed, then it'll do this little tuft on the end. It is a very, very fun hydrangea. Um, let me give you the specs on it. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna dip down here where the tag is so that I can see it. It is going to be hardy in zones three to eight. So if you're in zone three, four, five, you could do absolutely full all day sun. No problem, you don't have to worry about it. If you're zone seven or eight, like um, we are, zone seven B, you just gonna have to watch it. You may have to have it on some irrigation or keep it well watered, especially for the first year while it gets adjusted. It is going to be three to five feet tall and wide. And because panicles bloom on new growth, I love it. You're guaranteed flowers every single year and you're going to prune it once a year, late winter going into spring. For us in North Carolina, that means mid to late February into early March. So you can keep it a size that you want. So puffer fish is a great option. Now, coming on down here, we have got Fairy Trail Bride. Fairy Trail Bride is new. I believe this is like the second year that it is on the market. And this is the first trailing hydrangea. So you can see that it will do nice creamy white flowers. This is color specific, meaning it's not going to change color, hence fairy trail bride. So it's going to be a white. This blooms on new and old growth. Now, if you see, you will like closely that we still have some sticks on here. That is because this plant does bloom on new and old growth. So we don't want to prune this at all until it has completely flushed out and we know that this stick is it's dead, right? So that's not a problem. We can go in here and clean it up. You don't want to trim this like your panicle hydrangeas until it has completely flushed out so that way you're not cutting off 
any blooms because if we had cut off like this limb well we just lost a flower but this is going to be a four by four it is best not to trim it you can put it in the ground i have people that put it in very large containers and it is definitely going to be more of a southern plant i want to say it is hardy in zones seven to nine uh, let me double check on that six to nine so hardy in zones six to nine and it is at four by four really fun and then when the flowers open up they are just massive it is more of a little bit like a lace cap bloom on it but really fun and unique and different beside of me here we have bobos and bobos are another wonderful panicle hydrangea they too are starting to put on some buds here pure white flowers and bobo is going to be smaller um, because sometimes our hydrangeas our panicle hydrangeas can get a little they can get a little big right well bobo is going to be a two and a half to three feet tall and three to four wide so it's going to be a little wider than it is tall hardy in zones three to eight and then that sun to part sun series so as far as conditions rather so you've got lots of options when you're looking at your pinnacle hydrangeas you can go very petite or we can go nice and big now another different type of hydrangea we've done panicles we've done trailing now we're going into oak leaves now oak leaves are really fun and uh, if you take a look at the plant it's probably pretty easy to see why it's called an oak leaf hydrangea because the leaves look exactly like an oak leaf and this is Gatsby gal now that's one my hand is just look how long that is massive massive blooms on it creamy white with a little bit of a hint of green to it but Gatsby gal is one of those oak leaf hydrangeas that can actually do sun um, it's kind of crazy because historically the oak leaf hydrangeas can only do like shade filtered sun Gatsby gal can definitely do sun I have one at the house and it gets sun up to sun down it is on irrigation they're hardy in zones at five to nine and it will be five to six feet tall and wide your oak leaves are very much like your um, trailing hydrangea it is best not to prune them you just want to put them in a place where they can easily get their five to six feet tall and the five to six wide for an oak leaf hydrangea that's actually kind of small my mom has an oak leaf hydrangea that's probably 20 years old and it's probably 15 feet tall maybe 20 feet wide like it's massive it is huge um, and they like moist well-drained soils but gorgeous leaf on it and then in the fall the leaves themselves or blooms on it rather beautiful blooms the leaves will turn a gorgeous red burgundy color so you get lots of good fall interest on this plant as well um, we're going to back up just a little bit continuing with the uh, hydrangea themes we have got two different kinds of incredibles these are smooth hydrangeas smooth hydrangeas will look like our classic hydrangea with that big huge mop head but they bloom on new growth so therefore we're going to get blooms flowers every single year and you can prune it to keep it a size that you want so these are incredibles we have traditional regular incredible and incredibles are what i have um, planted behind our patio and incredibles will do a huge pure white bloom on it and you can see these things are covered in buds mine at the house are absolutely covered in buds it will not be long before they flush out and they're beautiful white flowers these again can do some sun zones three to eight mine get full sun all right sorry about that we were having a little camera difficulty so if the if it looked a little funny hopefully we have fixed it but incredibles are really fun because it's uh, four to five feet tall and wide this is like an improved annabelle we're, we're very familiar with annabelles but they tend to be very floppy incredibles nice strong stems sturdy stems on them uh, like i said zones three to eight beautiful i mean when these are in full bloom they are a showstopper for sure so we have incredible and then we have incredible blush and incredible blush they're a little bit smaller right now but the incredible blush will turn oh yeah there's a big one back there um will turn 
they're pink. So this is a color specific meaning, so hydrangeas are either color specific, meaning no matter what kind of soil you have, they will be that color. Or they are pH dependent, meaning that the color is gonna depend on your soil's pH level. So Incrediballs are incredible and wonderful. Coming on over, we have got hydrangeas galore, y'all. So if you're a hydrangea lover, then this is a great one for you. Here we have fire lights. Fire lights are some of my favorite panicles. Now these are gonna get really large. And in fact, these are in already in seven gallon containers. So you're gonna have a massive root system. So when you put this into your ground, these things are just gonna take off and be very happy. They are covered in buds. The fire light itself, like if you can see, um, I don't know if Jerry can get it, but the stems are have a reddish hue to them. Fire lights for me are the ones that will turn pink the best. If you live in a cooler climate or you're in a climate where your nighttime temperatures will get cool and there's no very little humidity at night, then your panicles, depends on the type of it is, of course, a lot of them will turn a pink or a red hue. In the south, our nights do not cool off, right? So if you're in the south in July and August, you know that nighttime, the humidity is just as high or higher at night than it can be during the day. Therefore, our panicles will go from like a creamy white to a brown. It's nothing that you're doing, it is the climate that we live in. However, fire lights for me, like I said, have been the best, the most reliable to take on those pink hues. That is what is so much fun about this. They will get large, right? So a fire light, let's see if I can look here for you. A fire light will get to be six to eight tall and wide, hardy in zones three to eight. I have these up on Hydrangea Hill and I absolutely love them, adore them. They are fantastic plants. Um, let's see. What is that one? Dark green. The dark green. This is Limelight Prime. So this row right here, of that beautiful dark green, this is Limelight Prime. And Limelight Prime is um, relatively new on the market within the last two years. It is what I call the teenage version of Limelight. So you have limelight which is the biggest of this family then you have little lime and little lime punch which are the smallers the babies and then you have um, limelight prime which is going to be a medium size height to it um, much more um, maybe adaptable than what um, as far as like size wise what people have because it's going to be four to six tall four to five wide so it's going to be taller than it is wide which is really nice and helpful in certain situations. Hardy in zones three to eight. Just a really, um, so it says, it's even better than the original, stronger stems, earlier blooms, and a slightly smaller size. So those are great. Now, some other things that you may want to consider for your yard, if you are looking for flowers, <laughs> you cannot go wrong with summerific hibiscus. Look at this plant already. I don't even know which one this is off the top of my head because I don't see a tag. Um, but the summerific hibiscus, these are perennial hibiscus that faithfully come back year after year, extremely cold tolerant. Um, our Southern folks are like, are you sure it's gonna come back? Yes, I think they're like rated to zone three. So they will come back for us, not a problem whatsoever. Um, they come in a range of colors and in fact, I see this one has buds on it. This one is the Berry Awesome. So we have our actually have our first buds right here on the Berry Awesome, which is crazy because, can you see those? Let's see, where are you? Look at that right there. See those? Those are buds. They have come up so early this year, but they die back completely to the ground in the winter time and then they come out and when they start growing, they start growing. So you can get um, a beautiful solid green. Which ones are those? Lilac Crush. Oh, those are the Lilac Crush? All right, so Lilac Crush is new this year. You have Lilac Crush and Valentine's Crush. So Lilac Crush is, gosh y'all, this is one of my favorite favorite ones. I have it out by the patio. I have three of them. Beautiful. I mean, 
all of them will have massive flowers on it. But the Lilac Crush is the first in this color. It is a beautiful, soft lilac lavender color that almost kind of at certain times of the day take on like a bluish hue to them. Very nice, very much more upright. So you're either gonna have the ones that are upright or what they call a gumdrop, where they're like wider than they are um, tall. And then this one is the Edge of Night. So you can see where you can get such color difference. So you've got the Lilac Crush, it's bright green. And then look at Edge of Night. Look how dark and black and glossy these leaves are. And then this has a beautiful iridescent um, pink bloom to it. It's one of my favorites. This is gorgeous. So Edge of Night and Lilac Crush really are some of my absolute favorites of the series. Just great plants, super easy. They love damp conditions. So if you have a wet area, these do really, really well and will continue to bloom for a long time. Now, talking about blooms and lots of blooms, we've got hibiscus, Roses of Sharon. Roses of Sharon are in the hibiscus family. Um, we have the Little Kim series. So we have a Little Kim Red and then just Little Kim. But Roses of Sharon can get really big. I mean, like, eight to 10, can even be 12 feet tall if they're happy where they are. Well, the Little Kim series is gonna be nice and small. Um, you can see all of the buds that are on this thing. It will only be three to four feet tall and wide. Extremely adaptable, much more versatile for people who have um, a small space or you wanna put it in a container. It is hardy in zones five to nine, definitely full sun. Another great thing about the Roses of Sharon is that they bloom on new growth. So you can trim it late winter, like your panicle hydrangeas, and then they flush out and are covered in flowers. If the red, which is not, I was telling a couple this weekend, I said it's not NC State red, it's more of a mauve color. If that is not your jam, then you may just want to have Little Kim. And Little Kim is going to be more white with that red pink center in the eye so lots of options for you um, as far as color goes now let's see do we want to mosey on up to the uh greenhouse all right let's mosey yeah, honeysuckle and bloom oh <gasps> yes all right so this is the sensation uh, from Proven Winners. We got a, a, some more in, so there you go. This is a non-invasive honeysuckle. For those of us that have the invasive honeysuckle that grows wild, um, I was telling somebody, I was like, I love it because this time of year is blooming and it is so incredibly fragrant. However, it will strangle and it will kill plants at a time not the sensation it is a very nice vigorous climber i have two of these on the fence and so they are very well behaved but you need to give them something to climb onto because as you can see if you don't then they just start climbing each other um, beautiful they're going to be hardy in zones four to nine ten feet tall two to four feet wide beautiful so we've got those as well now we're going to go on up to the nursery up here because um, of course we've got annuals for you and we have the easy scapes available um, to see they are coming in quite nicely um, just so this is an example of that summerific hibiscus right this is we always forget this is <laughs> evening star evening rose evening rose so this is evening rose very happy we planted these last summer in like june july it was hot and it was the same size as those ones that i just showed you and look how nice and big they are right now beautiful hot pink flowers on them there are three right here as the season goes on they will grow and they will be touching each other so hibiscus doing really well Last week you saw me um, plant the berm with a, a ton of perennials and our folks here at the nursery set up uh, a little stand of our own little mini easy scape 
using plants from the berm. So remember, easy scapes are those kind of those plant by numbers. These are plants that will pair really well together, perennials that grow well together, different bloom times and different interests. So this would be one that is for the sun and I would dare say even like deer rabbit resistant because they're basically all in an herb family. So here we have the drops of Jupiter oregano. This plant y'all has knocked my socks off. I planted it last year. I kept this beautiful chartreuse green foliage all winter long and now I had these huge mounds of oregano growing in the backyard. Beautiful, beautiful chartreuse color and then it will flower. The flowers for me are just an absolute bonus. This is going to be hardy in zones four to nine and you're going to want to space them three feet apart and it is a full sun. You can eat it but it's not going to be as tasty as your culinary oregano. Then we have the cat's pajamas nepeta. This is one that I would actually probably put in the front you could probably put the nepeta and the cat and the oregano very similar but this is going to be another obviously it's a cat mint right so it has that nice herby smell minty smell to it pollinators love this plant it does these beautiful blue flowers on it nice big mound it is not invasive at all none of these plants are this is the perennial plant of the year 12 to 14 inches tall hardy in zones three to eight so cat's pajamas is a great one and then the monarda the bee balm this is the upscale pink chenille and it is blooming right now it is a beautiful um, really kind of an electric pink color to it has um, 18 inches is going to be your spacing it's going to be about two feet tall so very manageable very nice for the middle or the back of the bed depends on how your bed is laid out and it's going to be hardy in zones four to eight these monardas are not invasive they are not going to send runners out and pop up all over the garden your mound gets bigger but they don't take over your entire garden so and the, and the monardas come in a very range of colors so we just happen to have the upscale um, pink chenille right here still loads of beautiful annuals right so you can come if you're still making some containers or you have some areas in your garden that you want to add to these would be great you cannot go wrong with this blue salvia this is the um, rockin blue suede shoes beautiful nice really rich rich flowers on it hummingbirds just go crazy for this plant they adore it so much so you have that the begonias sun or shade extremely versatile well behaved um, lots of the chick charms left and then caladiums we have a nice oh my goodness that was a spider web and a half right there my friends Woo wee goodness there was a happy spider making a web in there um, caladiums sorry I'm trying to recover here the caladiums now these caladiums like look at this look look how massive my two hands don't even fit this this is a massive caladium and I'm gonna find a tag for you so I can tell you what the name of this baby is it is a very happy very happy caladium and this happens to be ooh, burning heart there you go so the proven winners they have the heart to heart that's what the series is of their caladiums burning heart now you'll notice it says sun tolerant that means that yes it can take sun so it's going to be very adaptable in the sun requirements it is going to make a massive statement 15 to 20 inches tall so your caladiums come in a various like sizes right here you've got one that's obviously going to be a little bit shorter but caladiums are those plants that do amazingly well here in the south and they come in all the colors so you've got burning heart that's that deep deep red you've got this is uh, rose glow which is going to be more of that pink and green one of my favorites hot is hot to trot. Isn't that fun? And then raspberry moon. I believe that's raspberry moon. It is. And then look at this one. This is clowning around. 
clowning around, look how it's ruffled. Don't you love that? Just the texture of it. So it's the creamy white and the green and the pink. And look at that water droplet. Can you see that water droplet? That's what that is. Isn't that cool? It's so much fun. One of our customers was here um, and it, it looks like some sort of, like, can you get that, Jerry? I just want, these are the little things that make me so happy about plants. It looks like some sort of crystal or something that's on there, but it's actually water, right? So we can tip it. Boop. Isn't that fun? You got to find the fun in the little things, y'all. So cool. Now, I hate to even say this and show you this because I only have one tray of it, but look at this color. This is so stinking unique. This is Va Va Violet. And it truly is, like it's a pink, but it has those purple hues to it. So I think we've got four of these. So whoever comes, the first person who comes and gets them, gets to take them home. I think they are cool. I don't have anywhere to put it, unfortunately. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be talking to you about it because it'd be in my garden. Um, but these are shade. So this is going to be a shade caladium. Jerry's making faces behind me, uh, behind the camera at me. Uh, he doesn't like it sometimes when I say, huh? gonna go home with me people um, one of the plants we have not talked a lot about this year and I don't know why we just haven't Angelonia so this is the angel face Wedgwood blue is that not just the prettiest flower I think they're fantastic they're very upright gonna be about 18 to 30 inches tall the 18 inches is gonna be if it's in a container the 30 inches is gonna be more if it's in the landscape be a fantastic thriller in a container, right? That uprightness, beautiful, beautiful color to it. Sweet potato vines, we've got it doing really well. Um, the artemisias, all sorts of um, beautiful, of course, the petunias, we have all of that um, doing really well. We do have some of the mini Vista Scarlet. Yes, we had sold out of that super fast. Then we brought some in to grow. Do we grow these or we? We grow. We grew them. Yep. So the mini of Scarlet we've been really happy with. It has done extremely well. Nice vigor to it. Look how nice and tight that is. Not leggy as a grower. We like plants that grow compact. We do not use growth regulators. So it, we love plants that naturally are compact and not crazy leggy and uh, getting out of control. So the mini of Scarlet we still have, but just petunias petunias galore the petunias are in here we have the new super petunia vista jazzberry which is a, a fantastic color and then um, more of them out here lots and lots of options for you we're going to wrap up today because i want to show you a container that i did um mm, it's been a couple weeks now that i've done and it has grown into itself really nicely. So I wanted to share that with you um, to give you some ideas and some inspiration, especially more for my shade people. You could absolutely do this. If you're sun, you're just gonna have to change up some plant ideas. This is a great one for the shade though. This is, it's not a unique stone. My mom and I got this a gazillion years ago from another nursery and it looks like a bird bath, but it really is a planter. It does have a hole in the bottom of it. This is a shade container. So I thought it would be really fun. I picked a hosta that I liked. I just went through and I wanted a bright green hosta that had lots of beautiful color. This is stained glass. Don't get hung up on the specific one. Just think of the color. What color do you want? So I took the hosta, I paired it with a caladium. This is lemon blush. Lemon blush is a beautiful shade caladium. I put it off to the side because the hosta is gonna be taller than the caladium. Paired it with Pegasus begonia. Pegasus begonia is an annual begonia from Proven Winners. It is for foliage. It, It'll do a bloom, but it's, it's very insignificant. You're growing it for the foliage. We'll get nice and big. Then we have the new introduction for next year. So this is not available. This is a trailing coleus. It is cherry drop. I had to think for a second. So cherry drop coleus, and you can see that it was starting to come this way and it will trail over. 
Then the Double Delight Primrose, this is a begonia. It is a mounding and trailing begonia. Beautiful, I mean, just, I love this plant. It does really good with a couple of hours of sun and then it needs some shade for me in North Carolina. And then finally, we did the White Linen Terrinia. This will do sun or shade and this will be a spiller. So it will fill in and then it will trail over. So here you have a really, easy colorful shade loving container so a lot of times we think people will think of shade gardens and you're not having a lot of color options i beg to differ you absolutely can the beautiful thing about coleuses from proven winners the color blaze they can do sun or shade so you can get beautiful rich color or bright whichever one you want in your shade garden using coleus so i just thought this would be fun to share with you i've been really 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 happy with how it is filling in and um I'll continue to keep you updated on it as we go through the season. But all I'm doing right now is watering. It has not had any kind of water uh, soluble fertilizer. It's got the compost on the bottom, then your potting soil with Proven Winners Potting Soil. Boom, there you go and everybody is very happy. All right, so if you're local, come see us Wednesday through Saturday nine to three those are our hours those are our hours from now until sometime in december when we close for the season wednesday through saturday nine to three if you're coming this weekend saturday we will have boltons boltons will be here with their amazing burgers fries and onion rings so you can come see us we would love to see you as always thank you so much for gardening with creekside we hope you have found this fun informative and inspirational y'all have a great day we'll see you in the next video Bye, friends.